Some have suggested that psychology has a problem. According to one article, thousands of autistic girls are going undiagnosed. In another article, considering the brain through a male lens has had public health implications. We don't study female animals in research because women's hormones are too complicated. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. In this video, we're going to explore the issue of gender bias. This video is the start of a series exploring the topic of issues and debates. This topic is broken down into three issues and four debates. The three issues are gender bias in psychology, cultural bias in psychology, and ethical implications of research studies and theories, including reference to socially sensitive research. The debates include free will and determinism, nature and nurture, holism and reductionism, and ideographic and nomothetic approaches. Key to the topic of issues and debates is to use your knowledge of psychology from different parts of the course to illustrate and discuss the issues and debates. I'm going to select a few examples to use in each video but that's not an exhaustive list and you may be able to come up with other examples from other topics that you've studied that you might want to use particularly if you consider the optional topics that you're studying for paper three so let's explore the issue of gender bias in psychology gender bias refers to treating a person in a more favorable or less favorable way based on their gender when psychological research or theories put forward a view of men or women's behavior that does not accurately represent their experience, this can lead to stereotypes that can potentially cause harm. In the issues and debates topic, key terminology is very important. The exam specification for this topic includes a whole range of keywords which you need to make sure you clearly understand. So in addition to understanding what gender bias is, you need to understand the following key terms. Alpha bias. This is when there is a misrepresentation of behavior because researchers overestimate or exaggerate differences between men and women. Beta bias. This is when there is a misrepresentation of behavior because researchers underestimate or minimize differences between men and women. The next key term is androcentrism. The word andro comes from the Greek for male. So to be androcentric means to have a male-centered view of the world. This is where male behavior is judged to be the norm, more acceptable and desirable. And finally, universality. This is where a theory is thought to apply to all people in the same way, despite, in this case, any differences between genders. Now let's discuss each of these key terms with examples from psychology. We've just seen that alpha bias is when there is a misrepresentation of behavior because researchers exaggerate the differences between men and women. A classic example of this comes from none other than the infamous and controversial Sigmund Freud. And unsurprisingly, this is going to be a bit strange. There are a few ideas of Freud's that you need to keep in mind whilst we consider gender bias. Firstly, there is the structure of personality made up of the id, ego, and superego. The superego, otherwise known as the morality principle, is our focus here. Secondly, we also need to keep in mind the psychosexual stages of development. You may remember that for Freud, everyone goes through the phallic stage around the ages of four to five. And during this stage, the boy needs to resolve the Oedipus complex, where he has castration anxiety, and the girl, the Electra complex, where she has penis envy. In order to resolve these conflicts, they need to identify with their same-sex parent, and then they will internalize their parents' characteristics. The girl will take on the roles and characteristics of her mother, and the boy his father's. Importantly, it's during the phallic stage that the superego develops. Now, if you need to refresh your memory of the structure of personality and the psychosexual stage of development, you can watch this video linked up here or in the description below. But what's this got to do with gender bias? Firstly, for Freud, women are morally inferior to men. And this is because of the process of identification. Freud argued that girls do not identify with their mothers as strongly as boys identify with their fathers. Girls identify passively. In contrast, boys identify actively. Now back to the superego, the morality principle. If girls identification is weaker, this means they will internalize a weaker set of morals compared to the boys. As a result, women are morally inferior to men, according to Freud. 
Here, Freud is guilty of alpha bias, of misrepresenting behaviour because he has exaggerated the differences between men and women, in this case, in terms of morality. Now we come to beta bias, this time with the research of Lawrence Kohlberg. Beta bias is where we minimise the differences between men and women. Kohlberg proposed a theory of moral development. This theory outlined a series of stages that children go through, with each stage increasing in its level of morality, i.e. the higher the stage, the more developed you are in terms of your moral reasoning. To research a child's understanding of morality, Kohlberg presented them with various moral dilemmas, with one of the most famous known as the Heinz Dilemma. Kohlberg wasn't particularly interested in what the children thought Heinz should do in the dilemma, but more interested in why they thought he should do that. In other words, the emphasis was on how the children thought and reasoned about morality. When Kohlberg tested women, they were more likely to achieve stage 3, whereas men were at stage four. This research led to the suggestion that women's morality might be less sophisticated than that of men. However, Carol Gilligan, who at one time was trained by Kohlberg himself, turned on her master. She argued that his theory was biased. She pointed out that Kohlberg's theory of moral development was based largely on a longitudinal study which used an entirely male sample. Kohlberg had argued that although his research involved all males, his theory of moral development was universal and applied to both males and females. Gilligan also argued that as well as using a biased sample, Kohlberg also used moral dilemmas that were biased towards a male way of reasoning. She argued that female morality had more of a focus on caring for others and not hurting someone else's feelings, what she called an ethic of care, and as a result would end up lower on Kohlberg's stages of morality, not because they are morally inferior, but because the theory is gender biased. So this is an example of beta bias, because Kohlberg minimised the differences between men and women by assuming the male responses in his research would apply equally to women. For a final example of beta bias, let's consider the stress response. When you and I are faced with a stressful or threatening situation, our body responds with the fight or flight response. However, most biological research into the stress response is conducted with male animals. Scientists have typically justified excluding female animals from experiments, even when studying conditions that are more likely to affect women, on the basis that fluctuating hormones would render the results uninterpretable. Researcher Shelley Taylor has challenged this and argues that the fight or flight response to stress is incomplete. This is because one of the most striking things about the human stress response is the tendency to come together in groups to provide protection and relationship. Based on her research, she proposed an alternative to the fight or flight response known as the tend and befriend stress response in women. The fight or flight response is an example of beta bias in psychology because it was based on male animals and then thought to be universal. It applies to both men and women, when in fact it minimised the differences in the stress response between men and women, failing to consider a tend and befriend response. This now brings us back to androcentrism. Androcentrism means to have a male-centred or male-biased view of the world. And this is a problem because it can create misleading assumptions about female behaviour and potentially have negative implications for females. For example, according to this article, thousands of autistic girls and women are going undiagnosed due to gender bias. This is because autism was thought to predominantly affect boys and men at a ratio of 10 to every one woman. Due to this assumption about autism mainly affecting men, studies often recruited male-only samples, which has meant that girls have been underdiagnosed, particularly because they are more adept at masking their symptoms. Why does this matter? Well, this has huge negative implications for girls because the failure to diagnose autism earlier on means they receive less help and support. It also means that they experience many other mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, and self-harm. One study found that 23% of women hospitalized for anorexia 
met the diagnostic criteria for autism. This clearly shows the negative impact that gender bias in psychological research can have on the well-being of women if research is biased towards men. So has gender bias been an issue in psychology? Yes. Clearly. Psychology therefore needs to be reflexive. In other words, it needs to reflect on itself and make changes. There are many suggestions put forward for change in this area, but here are a few. In order to reduce alpha bias, a change is needed in the publication of results. This is because there is a bias towards publishing positive results. In other words, results that find gender differences are more likely to get published than those which don't and this can exaggerate differences leading to alpha bias. In order to reduce beta bias, one simple way is to not simply have all male samples in studies like Milgram, Ash and Zimbardo and instead ensure women are included. Another way is not to generalise findings from research with male participants to females or to not generalise findings from research with female participants to males. Next we're going to explore cultural bias in psychology where it's going to get a bit weird. To watch that video you can click the video on the screen now or link below. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.